Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today's video isn't so much about an organ, but about a part of an organ. We're going to be visiting the Shrine of St. Joseph in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, we have been to this church before. We saw the organ and made a video about it. It's an 1890 J.G. Pfeffer, uh, and it was restored by Martin Ott. If you haven't seen that video, there's a link up here. There's one down in the description, and I recommend you go watch that first. In that video, Martin tells us about how he restored the organ and the action in Winchester, but he also told us that the, the uh, regulator was not re-leathered at the time because it had been done in recent memory and just didn't need it. The leather was still in decent condition. Now, reservoirs are often an underappreciated but very important part of a pipe organ. Uh, this one right here is much more modern than the one we're talking about today, but it's easier to see it all. While designs have changed a bit and gotten a little more standard in recent times, uh, the basic design and function of this device hasn't changed for hundreds of years. Air from a source, usually an electric blower, comes in the side and it causes the hinged lid to rise up as the pressure inside increases. When the regulator is fully inflated, uh, it pulls a valve closed and that stops the air from coming in. Now, the addition of weights on top make the lid heavier. It could also be springs pulling down from the inside. Uh, it makes the lid heavier and it takes more air to get the regulator fully inflated and close the valve. And that's how we control the pressure that it supplies to the organ above us. A little more weight and uh, the pressure goes up and if you take some off then the pressure will go down. There have been many kinds and shapes of reservoirs but this one here is a pretty standard design. It's basically just a big empty box with this hinged portion. The side of each part is You've got two wooden slats called ribs, so there's eight of those going all the way around. They're connected to the box and to the lid with some hinged material uh, that's flexible, and also in between the ribs there's a hinge. And then all of that is covered with leather. Now, unfortunately, this leather is exposed to outside air. And given a number of variables, such as the uh, quality of the leather, what the condition is like in the organ, that leather can have a limited life. Once it starts to deteriorate, air leaks out, it causes some further damage, the pressure doesn't stay the same, and the organ doesn't sound as good. Now, to fix that, it's usually not a big deal, especially if it's just the leather that needs to be replaced and not all the hinge material has to be taken out. Now, if this organ were more cramped, I might have to sit right here and do it all in place. That's not a pleasant way to do it, but it's not unheard of. Fortunately, here, I could just unscrew the wind connections, have someone help pick it up and take it out to the back of a truck, toss it in the back, and uh, take it to an organ shop where it can be repaired on a nice, spacious, well-lit organ bench, brought back and the organ's playing after just a few days. This regulator is smaller, but it's also just big enough to supply wind to uh, the chests that are right here next to it. So now I'm here at the Shrine of St. Joseph in St. Louis, Missouri, home to this 1890 J.G. Pfeffer organ. The reservoir we just saw belonged to an organ that was about twice the size of this one, and it had seven of those regulators throughout the instrument. This instrument has just one reservoir for the entire organ. It was originally hand-pumped, so you wanted all of that wind to go into just one place. Well, the time has come to re-leather that large single reservoir of this Pfeffer organ. That task falls to our friend Christopher Sower. Uh, Chris was kind enough to let cameras follow the entire process around, uh, and uh, that's what you're about to see now. I'll let Chris they explain They ca called me and asked me if I would come and uh, tune uh, a couple of reeds that were out, and this was October um, that I was here, and um, first thing I noticed was there was an inordinate amount of wind noise, um, which is not conducive for good tuning, and then also it's not good for a, a solid pipe organ to have that much wind leak. So um, as soon as I got inside, I noticed that there were um, holes in the gussets of the reservoir, and the reservoir being rather large and the single supply for wind in the entire instrument, I was a little concerned. And after inspecting, I found that the leather was completely dry rotted and uh, needed to be replaced pretty immediately, otherwise the organ would be out of commission. I knew I was going to need help. Um, it's so big. Um, it's six and a half feet um, by ten and a half feet, which is very large for a reservoir. So I, I, I met Richard um, years ago, and um, so I, I instantly knew that this was the, the project that needed a, a Nickerson touch. So um, and we, we call him Nick. Um, so every once in a while you hear me call him Nick, but his name is Richard. Yeah, I've been in the trade. Uh, long enough so that for the company I worked for and myself has been um, you know 55 56 years so far and uh, we did a lot of reservoirs when I worked for the gentleman that I learned the business from and since I've been on my own I've done roughly 350 reservoirs of various sizes from little teeny ones to ones like this and a little bigger and it's just you know different people that have hired me to help them out like my Quinby had had me come in and rebuild uh, a plethora of reservoirs for various different jobs. And uh, he liked my work and 
when I get done, they always work uh, correctly, which is always good. But uh, so some people just call me uh, the Reservoir Man now because I've done so many. <laughs> I'm used to uh, the mass manufacturing of reservoirs that happened in the last century. Um, molars, wicks, um, Reuters, Alien Skinners, Skinners, they all had standard sizes because they were building instruments en masse. So they built reservoirs that same way. Um, this one is out of the ordinary because it's so big and also I knew that there were parts and pieces that didn't belong, so we would have to be thinking about as if we were going to ma manufacture it from scratch, um, like as if we were designing this reservoir the first time it was ever built. This weather looks an awful lot like the stuff that was around in the early 1970s. The stuff that goes dry rot like that? Oh, yeah. They did that in the 90s, too. Yeah, well, in the 70s, it was worse. They, I mean, even Casavant had uh, had to start doing swimmers and reservoirs for their organ in rubber cloth. Oh, really? Even the gussets. Wow. I didn't think you could put a gusset with rubber cloth. Well, you can. You just can't stretch it. You have to cut it. Yeah. 2.0. Two. Two. Two inches. It's not anemic for, I mean, it's normal for percent. Um, it's, a, it's a little. I'd like to hear it. So. If it's a bigger organ in a bigger church, it's a little. Knowing that Pepper would mark their pipework with what rank it was, um, and oftentimes they would mark on the lowest C, JG Pepper and Sons, you know, whatever scale it is, they would also write the wind pressure. So we were looking for a confirmation that the pipework was originally voiced on three inches, and uh, at the top of the um, two foot of the mixture, actually that's not a two foot, but it's marked two foot, oddly enough, um, it is uh, scribbled three inches, um, so or three and then the inch mark and then INC. So there's our answer. The people that were in town to do this kind of stuff, it's possible. The only thing is this is really nice leather work. They would not have done that nice leather work. Oh, it's all scratch. No, I know, that's what I'm saying. So the people that I know that would have done something like this with plywood, also would not have skived it. They may have bought the leather all skived. So, yeah, and they might have bought it from Logan Supply, given the width they skived it. Um, so I don't know what's on the inside, obviously, the first time I, I come here. I can see that the, the leather is cracked, um, that it's dry rot all the way around. Um, the hinges on the inside, I didn't know the condition of those and what materials they would have used. Um, normal is twill or some kind of a, a fabric. Um, and so sometimes people will use leather, sometimes people will use rubber cloth, that's what we chose to use, and then others will use twill. Um, so I didn't know the condition of that, so you know, rebuilding a reservoir, sometimes you don't have to replace the hinges, you can just replace the hinge leather on the outside. Um, I also didn't know what was to be expected as far as the construction, did they take it apart? Um, the last time they rebuilt it, were the edges true? Were the ribs for the reservoir original, were they you know, changed? Um, so all of those things kind of had to be factored into what are we going to be doing? Uh, it was big. I've, I've done big reservoirs before, but uh, this one's pretty close to the biggest. And um, they're usually in a place that's very difficult to get out. Uh, even here we had to take down part of the end wall of the case to get it out to get it into a position to work on it effectively. But uh, it, it's a challenge, but I like challenges. And uh, having had a fair amount of experience doing reservoirs, this is just a big one. The only thing I wanted to do was to uh, 
um, scrape off some of the leather on the hinge on the other side, which we have to do with the wind off, and see if we can get an inspection of the condition of the interior hinging. Okay. We see what it is, and if it's canvas, if it's rubber cloth, if it's just uh, um, you want a nice tape. It's like just a regular generic fabric hinge. Okay. And uh, like like blanket sticking. Uh, heavier. It, it looks okay. like the uh, canvas fabric, like you get from Organ Supply or yeah. those kinds of things. It's a fairly coarse weave. I get some of this off. I'm going to put some uh, water on it. Oh, I sure see it. Yeah. See. That looks like it's brand new, though. Like they. Yeah, that was probably new when they did it, but. Uh, so they didn't reuse is my point. But you know, we think it's a double rise, so, or it was a double rise, I should say. So it would make sense that they would have had to have replaced the hinge material. Yeah, and when we take this thing apart, see, this is so broad yeah. that if it was a double rise and had an inverted fold, the inverted fold would have been on the top. Yeah. And on the inside in here, you'll see evidence of where the hinging was glued. We'll know once yeah, it's apart. Right. But uh, shortly, we'll know. Um, but I, it, it would have to be. It's hand pumped. This era, this big of an organ, in particular with an open wood. Could you imagine trying to hand pump to keep up with that without having a double rise? Yeah. It would have had two boys hired for the bellows. <laughs> two? <laughs> doesn't feel sticky, does it? Yes, it does. Oh, good. Yeah. It does feel sticky, and that's the residue underneath the leather that I didn't scrape it all off. We'll have to tell the church that that's the second confirmed miracle for this shrine is that there isn't white glue. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we are concerned that when it was rebuilt that they used white glue which does not soften or dissolve with with water and any residue of, of white glue left in in the wood will not allow um, hide glue or fish glue to stick to it. We would have to plane off every bit of the wood where the leather and the hinging has to be attached otherwise it wouldn't stick. So um, we wanted to make sure that the adhesive that was used to put this in, together with the rebuild was either high glue or fish glue. Either one of those, when you re-wet it, it gets sticky. White glue does not. And this is definitely sticky. The weight on this reservoir is supplied by a number of bricks, all nicely wrapped in paper, and they all have to be removed to gain access to the top of the reservoir. number of other parts of the organ have to be disassembled or removed as well in order to access the entire reservoir. Now the, the vacuum is plugged in, so watch the cord. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad that you didn't try that by yourself. Do you have a pencil and labeling all this? Yeah. <laughs> Three. Okay. We'll find out. 
Okay. I think it's indexed. Does it look like it has a dowel at the bottom? Nope. Nope, just attached with leather. Nope. It's just leather. Why don't you put it out here? Um, okay. A little more, three inches. Okay, we're clear. I want the seat inside. I want to see the check valves and stuff like that. You know, make you feel better, won't it? Well, yeah, then we'll, we'll have our first view. Yeah. I, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. It won't take long. Let's have the privilege to open that up because that's your job. Not to do that, but it's, it's like King Tut's too. Yeah, right. Yeah. So what is the baying house? Yes. Do you want to take that out? Yeah. Oh, hey, he redid those. Yep. That's, that's Does that have strange. strips of cardboard on it? Yep. But, uh, to stiffen it, yeah. If there's any question at all, it's awful dirty. Yeah. And leaking. Yep. It, the question is, is whether or not it'll last very long because of the fact that it's already got so much dirt in it. Yeah, that's why I mentioned, that, you know, when we get this thing apart, we need to inspect these. Yeah, I know. And, uh. Here, you got that other little screwdriver. Well, Let me take that out. Look. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's going to be done. Right. Take the whole thing off as a unit. Yeah. They're gasketed, though. Yeah. We're going to have to regasket all of that. Too. Maybe. Maybe it, that looks like new gasket, but if that's in good enough shape because it was yeah, screwed it down. Could be. And look at all this. This had seals. Yeah. And they took them off and never replaced them. So I wonder if there's any. No, there's seals there. <laughs> that might be uh, well, paper. Oh, don't do that. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know that bothered you. I would have done it sooner. Uh, okay, let's put this back over the hole. Okay. So. Um, we have, what was the total? Uh, 34. Travel over the 34. 34. Okay, 34 uh, times 2. Because we, we have an upper hinge and a lower hinge. Two hinges. Okay. So, for insurance, just call it 70 feet. Okay. okay. And what we need is um, some ribs that are, are cloth, rubber that, what do you call it? Leather. This white stuff. <laughs> Okay. Are you okay? <laughs> of course I'm not okay. I'm here. <laughs> um, we need to know the width here. Now this to me looks like this leather is narrower than the original was because there's some... Yeah, I see the paint difference. But... Yeah, well the paint's here, but this looks like that's where the material was. Right. We're going to go right into there. Okay. Right toward the two strips, but... That's not all the way in, though. Are you I'm, compensating I'm to the edge. I'm to the edge of the leather. Okay. 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 From the edge of the leather strip. Do you want me to lift the top? No. Okay. I tried lifting it. Oh. No. Oh, it's need to leave the line. It just chews up the leather. It's not good. Okay. So there's one. Taking into account that raw wood there that doesn't have anything on it, I'm going to call that an inch and a half. This looks the same. You can't see it as well, but you see right here? Yep. You can see where it was. So this should be the same. Should. Okay, it comes to there. Yeah, in, figure an inch and a half of width for the whole uh, outer perimeter of the... Uh, okay. So what thing. I normally do is I take a piece of paper and I put it at that spot yeah. and I lay it over, have it fit all the contours yeah. and then I mark it. Is that acceptable practice? Yeah, that's, how, that's what I do when uh, when we put it back in. I'll take a piece that's yeah. cut and I'll lay it on there and put reference marks and then mm -hmm. usually what you do then you is you just take this and set it for whatever the line location is. Yep. You go like this with a pencil and you run along that gives you a reference and the top part you cover with tape yep. so that when you're doing your sizing and gluing and things it keeps it from making a mess. Yep. And um, well, you know, it's just like everything else. Two different approaches, and yeah, it's the same solution. So I just wanted to see. So how many square feet of leather do you need? Uh, so let's see if we we'll double check it here. We've got 70 feet, and we should be able to divide that by four. That's 17.5 feet. Square feet. Square feet. You gotta remember your yep, number. Square feet. feet. Yep. Um, I'm thinking of those six skins that you have. 
is enough leather. That's, uh, that's 36 square feet. Okay. And you need half that to do the whole perimeter of this reservoir. Okay. Well, I don't want to be caught with my technical pants down, so if we're going to order something, I want to know to I do it now. But that's what I'm, saying. I'm thinking of acreage. Yep. You've got enough already of good leather to be able to do the hinging on the outside. Okay. I'll see how far in this goes. You can't have your hand on that when I'm lifting it. I'm <laughs> letting myself down to the floor. <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> okay, now you ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, one, two, three. I'll say seven inches. Okay, down. So that'll be eight inches out, out to the point. So that the gussets will be heavy, isn't it? It is heavy. That is thick. Holy yes. cats, is yeah. that thick. Um, so we'll need 14 inches of finished length. Okay. Can you lift it up again? Yep, go ahead. Okay. Watch your fingers. Oh, sorry, I thought they were in. No, I, I, I had my knuckles over here. 14 inches finished length. Yeah, and figure six inches wide. The next step was removing a panel of the casework to make a wide enough opening so that the lid, which is made as one large unit, could come out, as well as removing more pieces that were inhibiting moving around. We don't really have to take this off of the box now, but going through the process we might as well. We're going to have to get in there and cut that at some point in time to get the lid out so we've got to break this free. What I would really like is if this was stay that would stay attached to the box yeah. the entire time until we need to get in there to tuck it. And there's not much that that leather is going to tuck down underneath. Well, so, I can make it go down lower if you want. And if we need to, I don't think these are screwed to the floor, so we'll actually be able to move sitting. the box. And that's the other thing, is once we take that away, if we need to pull it forward to get in there to do gasketing and stuff, we've got that option. But yeah. what I would want to do is build a little um, leg with a cleat underneath of it that we, I mean, not screw to the box, but just screw it in, or prop it under there and have it. Yes, yes, yeah, doing something like that would I be a good I don't like safety. the idea that it's hanging there. I'm sorry. And then also the, the joint here. Yeah. Is this, uh, well, yeah, that's low. It, it is. That um, actually, with that paint on it, feels like it's uh, rib leather, but it may not be. But yeah, it's hard to paint. tell. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Um, okay. But it's it's angled out, so anytime, if, as soon as we remove any kind of tension from this direction, it's going to want to go that direction, it's going to want to bust. Yeah. And it's the, gonna the only thing that we're holding from doing that is the angle on the, on the actual plate that attaches to the chest, and right, we don't want to stress that. That's, no. Yeah, that's going to buckle. I don't no. like that. This is stabilized because we don't want to have it loose. It's, it's sort of tight. It's, it's tight underneath, but um, once you start moving things, it's nice to know that, that they're not going to shift. And uh, so, this is going to be tight. Okay. This is just showing the fact that the top is a little bit smaller than the base at this point. Let's see how we're doing over here, because we have to, open. sometimes it hits the leather first, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it's fairly even top to bottom. So this is pretty much aligned with the base. Um, sometimes with old reservoirs, especially when they have a wide frame like this over the years, they shrink and the box doesn't so when you're trying to put it back together if you just put the ribs back in where they normally would go on the frame and on the top you'll find that the ribs are cockeyed and when the reservoir closes it puts a lot of stress on the internal hinges so we modify the ribs a little bit so that if the top is smaller we make the top ribs narrower and that allows the reservoir to open and close at the same plane and takes all the stress out of it. Check this one. Alright, let's see this one here. It's touching the leather a little. And it's probably a sixteenth of an inch away from the box. But up top, it's more like three sixteenths. 
So there is a certain degree of shrinkage because these rails are so big. And uh, we have to allow for that in our rebuild so that when we go back it won't, won't be uh, under stress. And the, the uh, splitting, as you see on the side leather, some of that can be a result of the fact that uh, as it closes, it's forcing this part here, the rib down here, to open up like that at the edge, and that starts the cracking. Because this, this uh, rib down here is actually a fair amount inside, and up here, it isn't. It's less. So that would indicate a little bit of difference. It's easy to allow for it, and uh, correct the situation when we rebuild it. When we get this out and we take the ribs out, we'll mark them as to which rib on each set is the top. Because the top is the part that needs to be trimmed to make it a fold in the right area. So uh, most people, they just take them apart and they strip them, they rebuild them, put them back together, and all those stresses are built back into it. And the instinct for anybody rebuilding a reservoir in a normal instrument built yeah. in the you know 20th century is to realign it with the existing parts because it's right. right that's what you do right and oftentimes you know you know 20th century stuff um, these rails would never be that huge no, no. they'd be a lot smaller the ribs that are, thickness. Are, yeah and it, it's it's just you're dealing with different measurements and uh, so those issues oftentimes don't come up at all what what is the thickness of this I didn't get a measurement yesterday uh, I guesstimated oh my god Inch and three quarters. Yikes. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. You could build several organs out of a lumber that's just in this top. <laughs> I know. So, gee, that's tow board stock. This, this is really, really heavy. I, I mean, I, I really wish that they would have left the double rise in whenever they rebuilt it before. Well, when we get this out and turn it over, we will then determine whether if it, it had us another fold. Because if it had an inverted fold, which would have been the top fold, um, it would have been glued on the inside of this up here. Right. And there will be evidence of having something glued on it. If there's no evidence of it, then it never had another fold, unless it was two folds that are alike. And some companies did two folds alike, some didn't. Gotcha. But it seems odd that they would have a fairly light box and a, such a massive top, unless they planned that to be part of the weight that they needed to make. Oh, I didn't think pressure. about that. That's a good That's idea. the only other thing I can think of is that make that so so heavy. Yeah. And because uh, normally a reservoir of this size at three inches of pressure would have been completely covered with bricks of a single layer. Of course, they were piled on the ends, but the, the ribs we found inside to straighten the top transfers any of the excess weight on the ends to the middle because it's attached. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have to really be concerned with spreading out the weight evenly over the top because of those ribs, those uh, stiffeners that are in there. But uh, it's interesting. It's yeah. interesting. Okay. You, ne you never know what you're going to find. Let's get that. Huh. I have a little flex pump. Yep. I'll try bar if we need it. You see, it's loose over here. It's just attached to the leather. Yeah. It's just pulling the leather. Hold on. There you go. There you go. Okay, good. See? So that we'll be able to work on that. But that was a, a, a place where you might want to grab. And you see, this was old, yep. obviously, yep. and done with chisels. Mm -hmm. But it was yes. done on site. It was definitely not yeah. done in the shop. Yeah, see, it's, it's hacked away like that. Yeah. So that's what, that's an original hole. This one what, not. Right. And it's clean. It's done with a, yeah. a, an actual. What I would suspect so. is that this may have had a blower on it years ago, and this was the old curtain valve. Mm. And that was it. And it just wasn't big enough. It wasn't big enough. Well, that's possible. And uh, when they did the, the new blower and the new trunk and everything else, they made sure that they had enough airflow into it. So this one may have, this is actually considering the size of the reservoir in the order, um, this probably wasn't quite big enough. Mm -hmm. But I would suspect that the, this has quite a break here too. But this was hacked out. So this most likely was a hole that was put in there for the first blower and the first curtain valve probably a valve probably a long time ago yeah and when we start stripping this off i'll probably find places where the screw holes and things like this there's nothing here but there is a screw hole here it looks like it remains of one and who knows what this was that may have been a screw see this holes here hole here indicates that there was 
something screwed on. So lift this side. Yeah. Okay, you put the brickets. Okay. Okay. And then you can lift that. Go watch your head. Your nest screws. Oh yeah. All right. Okay. That'll actually help us lift the other end. Okay. You ready? Yep. Why not two bricks at a time? Okay. Sir. All right. All right. So that way. I got it. You ready? Okay. Okay. Now, it's still heavy. It's already high enough to clear the box. That's what I thought. That's, that's high enough to clear the box with two bricks. That's what I want. Okay. So next thing is to cut. Yep. Okay. You want to stand in that let's corner. Yeah, let's get out of this. was not even hinged. Holy cats. Yeah, you find that when you start tearing things apart, but you don't usually find it in something that's already been rebuilt. Hmm. That might be interesting. You would think on an instrument this size that they would have done double racks. You play an open one and the bellows bumper has to call in auxiliary help. I plan to change up the hinges. Knife's not that sharp. It was time. That is amazing. That is really good. that that acts like leather if this was original that was a hundred years old. It was the beam. That's what I got. Just me that hurt my today. It sure does. Okay, I could not get it all the way to the center here, so let me see if I can the next thing we gotta do is take out the end set of ribs here. Yep. So that we can get that out of the way and they won't be damaged getting the, the well, top. Well I haven't even removed them from the top but Okay, well, Did you, you haven't labeled them yet, obviously. No. I, what we'll do is we'll get the top out. We'll, this one here will mark, when that comes out, I'll mark that D. Okay? And then uh, we can put it aside. It's amazing how, how easy that's letting go. That's unbelievable. It's not just not that sharp. No, and that's probably helping, too. But having a broad blade like that keeps you, keeps you from digging into the the thing so all right now i'm gonna i'm gonna lift this up hold it for you so you can cut this hinge you want me to take it out yep bottom you <laughs> know work for me <laughs> The hinge material will often be fine um, whenever gussets go bad. And so sometimes you don't have to replace that or even um, the, the leather that covers the, the ribs. And you just need to replace gussets and the caps. But in this case, when I came and saw that there was cracking all over the place, I knew that it was going to have to be done. And then the, the thought is as if, if dirt or soot um, is coming through enough to blacken the, the, the leather, it means it's coming through the the hinge material as well, and that, that those particles just rip that up, um, and so that's... Yeah, it acts knew, like grit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it, we knew it was going to need to be done. Um, this just made it very clear that it didn't have much time left on it before it was ready to go. And when that happens, um, you can have it to where it gives away, 
and you've got all that pressure and you've got all that weight and, and it'll just destroy it. Sometimes destroy the ribs uh, completely and you'll have to make new ribs and something this size making new ribs is not easy. So yeah. I'm glad we got it when we did. Yep. The sad thing about this is the part where it was folding is bad and the rest of it is still solid, but you can't reuse it. Oh, heck no. These are awful small ribs too. Uh, EH. This, this be just want to make sure that uh, okay. you just don't let the drag the edge. I don't want to chew up the. Uh, I'm not worried about the stiffeners that are in this. Right. So we're going to come out like to here. No. Okay. Okay. One, are you ready? Two, three. One set of bricks. One more. One more. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. And we're still on the other set of bricks. Yes, we are. Beautiful. Ready? So let's just pick it up slowly, twist it. We're going to come off this side here in a second. All right. Yeah, see, it's. No, that's fine. It's free over on your side. Yeah, that's fine. Ready? Yep, go. There's another set of bricks. That's okay. Okay. Looking. Go. Okay, a little bit at a time. Yep, watch them. Yep. Okay, if you drive the other end, watch yep. that end. We're good. We're still on this rail. We're fine okay. here. Oh, no. Okay. 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 Let, it, let it pivot. Down. Yeah. Okay. Okay, come on. Yeah. Okay. Let your okay. side go up a little more. Yep. Go ahead, come on. Okay. Yep. Okay, what's the way? Clear? Good. Excellent. Okay. Hold on. Okay. 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 Hold on. Hold to you. Back to you. Good. Clear? This is where we have our coffee break when it's halfway up, right? No. <laughs> All right. So let's walk it over there. Yep. And then we'll put some right. horses under. Yeah. One, two, yep. three. Max Chemical Studio. Out that way. see these dirt tracks like there's one here one here this is a tiny little crack that opens up through the the top there was air going through that and this acted like a filter and that's why it's so black and that's when it leaks this way causes this material to rot so fast and yeah, you may know those top panels we took off and we looked at the gaskets the there's several places where they weren't tight and they were leaking pretty good yep. And if there's anything uh, on those that needs to be corrected, we may have to put a couple extra screws in here and there. But that dirt tra tra uh, tracking on the on weather will tell us where we need to put them. Yeah. Because uh, it's amazing that some of them, they had so many screws on the ends and a fewer screws on the longitudinal. And the longitudinals had spaces like this and they were leaking. I mean, because look at that size. That's a, that's a huge. I can yeah. put my thumbnail on that. Yeah. Well, depends on how. And they see this stuff. did this here. This is still good. Yeah, this is still pretty good. But you can see over here something you should, you should not see. And the fact that the ribs aren't in the same plane this way. Look at the pressure mark that was left on there. Not on this side, but on this side. So this side was hitting first before this side. So the ribs were like this. Uh -huh. So that when this thing went down, it was forced, oh, forcing this up. Yep. At the hinge side, which is what you don't want. Nope. Same thing on the bottom with, yeah, with the other way, but yep. we'll correct for that one. Things the top had been cut into three different sections, which yep. means that the stability of the top, the thing that has the the most weight and stress on it, is compromised. The only thing I can see is is that the frame looks like it was separated too. And so maybe when they were removing it to bring it back to a shop to rebuild it, that they went, oh, well, we'll just saw it up, and then when we get it to the shop, we'll put it back together. And they decided to do that. It's just insane. Insane. Well, for whatever reason, they cut it apart. It might have been an error in the shop or something, but I think that uh, they may have doweled it back together and glued it. 
and then uh, when they were working on the exposed part, they sanded it flush and filled any cracks and things like that, and then put these ribs on it to hold it together as a single unit, and then sealed the inside of the crack with leather strips, as you can see. But uh, why it was originally cut in three pieces, I don't know. We have to be very careful. Since this has been um, chopped up and put back together, it's very weak and we have to be very careful. We use this as a work surface, but we have it supported with extra wood so that it's not hanging by itself. And this will be a good work surface, but before we go to put the, the new uh, hinging and actually start to put on the, the ribs, we're gonna put these back on and we're gonna reinforce these because these were, were not screwed on with many screws and they were done from inside. And uh, personally, I prefer having more substantial screws coming in through the top and then thread into the rib. But this is the first reservoir I've ever seen that somebody has chopped up and put back together. <laughs> Very first one. So you never know what you're gonna see. It doesn't make any difference if you've been in the business over 50 years. I've never seen this before. <laughs> but I've gotta get some pictures of this because uh, this is so unusual. The remaining leather was removed from the eight ribs as much as possible by first manually scraping it off. After that, the leather from the inside of the lid had to be scraped off by hand. Good? Uh, since the glue they did use was pipe glue and it's water soluble, uh, rather than sit there and paint water on with a brush and wait, we would wet the rags and we would keep the moist rags on the glued surfaces to allow them to soften so that we could scrape it off and then clean it with a, uh, a scotch brake. It's rough enough to take off the residue and so forth and then we'd, we'd wipe it with uh, clean rags and then allow it to dry. Um, but that way we could be working on something else while the rags were softening the glue and when they were ready we would attack that and then set up more and so forth. So we were able to uh, work on two things at the same time, saving time in the overall job. That's the stuff we couldn't get off because it was really well stuck. And you can see the glue over here. This is not leather, this is all glue. And you can see how thick it is. You can just peel it off. What followed was a process of scraping the glue off and then sanding the ribs to make sure that all the glue had been removed. They had the goal of making them look as good as new. You will thank me for not including the sound from this activity. All of the leather and glue needed to be removed from the top of the reservoir box as well. And doing a full soak wasn't really feasible, so it mainly required lots of elbow grease and scraping. Noisy, noisy scraping.
To prepare the inside of the lid, the remaining glue is dampened. And then it was scraped off and sanded as well. And now everything is ready for the attachment of new hinge material and leather. All of what we've shown you so far took place over just the first three days of a much longer process. To see how they complete the job, well, that's in our next video. You can find that right over here or there's a link down in the description. I hope you'll join me for that one. Thanks for watching.